All right, I'm recording this before the video, but this could be the last football played or last fixtured video of going into Continental. We're in the second round of the Copa Libertadores and we're up against a very strong Flamengo side. And as you'll see, with a lot of players missing. Hello guys, David here and welcome back to episode number 56 of Going Into Continental. Here with Newell's old boys, as I mentioned in the intro, this could be the last actual football playing episode of the series. There's going to be at least one more after this, depending on whether we get through or not. As I mentioned in the intro, we are up against Flamengo in the Copa Libertadores second round. We're going to be showing you the first and second legs today. But before we go into that, Let's give you a bit of an update as to what has happened since you last saw us. Of course, in Wednesday's episode, we won the um, we won the Super Copper Argentina on penalties against River Plate, which was, if I can find it, nope, that's not it. When was it? It's here. We won two. We drew two and one on penalties. And since then, as you can see, we have been playing very, very well indeed. We have won pretty much every game. In fact, we went unbeaten in the league since the gymnasium game in November. That tells you how, how decent we've been playing. As such, it does mean we won the league once again. It wasn't really a difficult thing, to be honest. That's why I didn't show you it. If you see what happened, we won by 12 points. Um, ever since we beat River in the final and then beat them again two games later in the, uh, in the league, they've just completely dropped off and we just carried on winning and winning and winning and drawing a couple of games here and there. So we comfortably romped to the title, which was... Really surprising, considering we were three points adrift of them at the start of the at the start of the year. But I'm not going to complain because it means we've done the double so far, and we're going for an unprecedented treble in the Copa Libertadores as well. But I'm not going to be I've got to be honest, I'm not hugely confident. Got I'm not going to lie to you. Reason for that is because we've lost quite a significant amount of players, key players such as Enzo Gonzalez, Leo Estevez. Um, Velasquez or Vasquez, can't remember his name was, the central defensive midfielder we brought in from Liverpool. None of them are at the club anymore. They've all gone back. We tried to get them back in on loan. They wanted a chance to the first team, so they're not going to be playing for us anymore. So you have seen the last of them. Again, apologies if I had to skip so far forwards. It's just simply because, obviously, with the end of the series coming as it is, it made more sense to give you guys the important games rather than kind of mess around and not really do a huge amount with it. So if we show you what's happened, um, this is not the right one. As I mentioned, obviously, those loan deals of... Oh, it's Rodriguez, sorry. Gabriel Rodriguez um, has now finished, and Enzo Gonzalez as well, and Aleo Estevez. Estevez is going to be the biggest miss. Um, we've still got Nora, so we've still got him as an option, but it's not quite the same anymore, I don't think, personally. Um, and in terms of more outgoings, we've had even more go. So Alan Velasco has gone to Bristol City for 5.5 million. That was a no-brainer. He didn't really play for us very often. I think he scored one goal for me. That was pretty much it. And uh, yeah, he, he was worth it, worth five and a half million. That's a full, full profit for us. As you can see, we got him in on a free. He played for a couple of, he played 17 games, didn't play very well. And we sold him five and a half million. So he's a bit of a no brainer to me. The other one is someone who did play well towards the end of the season. I'll give him that. But has gone on another big deal to a new Premier League club is Agustin Diaz. He's gone on the deal worth 15.75 million. Um, as you'll see, he didn't score many goals in the league. He was pounding him in otherwise, but 17 and 52 appearances in all competitions. It's just not that great. Um, yes, 12 assists, but we needed an out-and-out -out goal scorer. He was, a, he was a decent replacement for Varela, but not quite what we're after in the end, unfortunately. So he has left the club as well. Um, other ones, Spinelli and Urquia have both gone out on free, on free transfers and Victor Paz has left the club on loan back to Sierra for another year. Since that's happened, we've obviously had to try and strengthen the squad and replace some of the players we've lost. To replace Agustin Diaz, we have brought in Juan Jose Artrubi. Uh, he come in for, he's come in from Huracan on a £6.5 million deal. He's a massive, massively um, cheaper signing than um, Diaz was and arguably not uh, not that bad in comparison. He's definitely not as good. Um, I did try and bring in Florian Monzon in from River Plate. Um, the bid was accepted for £9.5 million. He was still going to be cheaper wages, but he wouldn't accept the deal and now I can't get him. So it's not going to happen. I'm not going to capitulate them financially 
just to do that because no point. Um, we've also brought in a couple of players whose names you may have seen I've talked or might, might have talked about points. One of them being Aaron Escribano. He's coming from Man United. We're paying quite a lot of money for him, considering this could be the last playing episode of the series. And I'm there, if that is the case, then I'll fast forward a few years so you can see what happens to the club. Um, spending £53,000 a week on his loan, on his wages, is quite a lot of money. However, look at that. Look at those stats. He is a playmaker if you've ever seen one. 18 passing, 16 technique, vision 15, decision 17. He looks like an absolute baller. Um, 33 caps for Argentina. He actually played over over a dozen games for, for Man United. He's, got, he's played, what, 50, 50 games in the past three years, but they wanted him to go on loan, so I snapped him up for a decent deal. We also brought in Hernan Federico Gonzalez. He's a young right back. I'm still doing some nice things for the club. The reason for that is because a couple of people have left slash are leaving, which I'll come on to in just a second. It looks like a decent young option. We're not really promoting through the youth anymore because we're not really getting that much quality through, to be completely honest. Um, to replace Enzo Gonzalez, we've got in Esteban Gonzalez. I'm not entirely sure if there's a relation between them. He is going to be our ball-playing defender. As you can see, again, he's coming as a no-nonsense centre-back. That's not going to happen, but look at that. Look at these defensive stats, the, the marking, the tackling, the positioning and all that sort of stuff. Anticipation, bravery, balance. It's all there. It's awesome. He looks, again, like a really good player, but again, paying quite a lot of money on his wages. So not the best thing in the world we've ever done. Um, and then the final one was just an option to strengthen depth in midfield. Mauro Ronchevich. He will be a box-to-box -box midfielder backup, as you can see. He's not the worst player in the world. He's definitely someone who will mature into a very decent player, I'm sure. But again, a nice little option to have in the centre of midfield because, as you can see, we're not... Yeah, we've got a fair few options. That's not that one there. That's what I wanted. We've got a fair few decent options. So we just kind of sit a little bit further down there. But with people like Bottomall, for example, playing in different positions, it obviously shifts him up there a little bit more as well. Um, outgoings... Otherwise, because I do think there's one other player I need to tell you about who did leave the club, which I think I've missed out. Because, um, again, I don't think I told you that he, this guy had left. Where is his name? I must have told you. Yeah, Dino Andriozzi has gone to Velez on a 2.5 a £2 million pound deal. Um, that must have happened because I remember telling you about Felipe Aguila and Thomas Belmonte, the former of which who looks to have retired. Yeah, he's retired as a player. That's a bit of a shame. Played nine games in his last season and he didn't do anything else. Anyway. I'm rambling. I've been talking at you for nearly seven minutes now. In fact, over seven minutes. Let's get into the game and let's show you who we're going to take to go and try and beat Flamengo. As you can see, we're very limited on players. We've only got half a bench because you can only make five changes to your squad in the Copa Libertadores from the group stages to the knockout stages. And a lot of them aren't here anymore. So not a lot you're going to do. Anyway, the team we are going to play against them is going to be Batalla in goal, a back four of Ferroni, Gonzalez, Fernandez, and Arietta. You wouldn't think of Damian Fernandez being one of our players anymore, would you? Crazy stuff. Escribano and Nora in the midfield. That's not the right one. That's what we need. Um, let's take that off personal as well. And then we've got a front three, a supporting three of Aguirre, Baltimore, and Debag. And then our Chubby starts his first competitive game for the club up top. He has just recovered from an injury. Do have the likes of Alan Zinho on the bench who can do a job there as well. Fingers crossed. We don't need him to. I've just realised I haven't checked to see what that fitness thing meant. I don't know how long he should, should not play for. I'll just figure it out as we go along. Let's face it. If he's going to be anything like all of the other people we brought in to play up front since Fred has left, he's probably not going to score and get a 6.4 rating, get hauled off just after half time. We shall see. But anyway, game is underway. Escribano plays it out to Arietta. I'm really interested to see how Escribano gets on. Like I say, big, big money transfer, him and Gonzalez in particular. See how he gets on. Debag's been playing well in the time that you weren't with us as well. As he goes through, whips a ball in or nearly gets it to Aguirre. Doesn't quite manage it, though. Tries to drop it to Arietta, and this is a bit of a worrying sign because it's going to get played through. No, it's not. It's gone to our chubby. Ooh. Again, I really wanted someone who was just a better finisher. Um, he's one better finishing. He's got a finishing of 10, but still, it's nothing that you're really going to be proud to shout home about as Aguirre just digs it over the bar. It's a decent start. I'll take that. We're creating, and that's the main thing. So, yeah, like I said, um, if we do lose this tie, this will be the last games you see us play in this save. Um, if that is the case, 
then on Monday's episode, I will endeavour to get five years into the future so we can see what's happened to the club. Um, I'm going to resign rather than retire because I'm pretty sure I've seen with, with other people, if you retire, you lose all the nicknames and I can't have to go and find out who they all are. Um, and if we obviously if we win, we just carry on. So if we do get to the final, I think I've figured it out based on scheduling. We will do the final next Friday, which seems like a, a nice way to do it. Nor are the chance there wider the mark. Just realised I've been playing without my monitor plugged in a little bit today. Well, I've been trying to skim through these. And I've just noticed that my stat screens aren't on the side of the on the side. So that's less than I do. Who's this guy? I don't know who he is. Jose Paolo. Uh, this is going to be wrong. Yeah, it always is. It, I used to have this fixed. I used to have this fixed, but now it doesn't remember it again. And I have to do that every time. Bottom or just wide of the target. Again, not really creating. Well, we are creating. We're just not really doing much with them. I th I would suggest we definitely need to get a win out of this first leg if we're going to have any chance of getting through. The good news is, is our Chubby's the best of our front four at the moment, ratings-wise, which is fairly decent to know. Uh, I'm going to say I'm far from pleased. It's going to be a kick up the arse. It's telling me that they're, they, they're su suggesting sorry that they've been excellent, which not quite seeing. Nor on the ball then. Plays it to bottom or presumably out to Debag, which he does. He's going to keep running. Ooh, keeper tips it over the bar. He absolutely thumped that at the goalkeeper for only with a corner then plays the ball in tries to get it to the man at the near post doesn't quite manage it which is a bit of a shame it's very weird knowing that this this uh, series is weird i mean the series is probably weird as well to be fair but that's not about that um yeah very odd to know that this series is effectively coming towards an end i've been doing this for three months now i think in in real life and it's very odd. It's it's not something I was expecting to get to the stage of, which is weird. Um, hopefully, I, I want to obviously get as far as I can. I want to win it, really. Um, by grace of how we've got on the last two years, we should, in theory, get to the semi-final this year. But Flamengo are a very good side. Not a side I was hoping to face in the first round. Alan Zinho is going to have to come on, which now means I've got no options really to go up front. Apart from maybe bottom or if I wanted to make that change, don't really have any options to do this either. In fact, let's do let's shift this round a little bit because Debag's not playing particularly well either. And then we can do this because Escribano can definitely play there. The reason I brought him in is because he does cover a couple of different positions. And there we go. Cool. Two changes made. Hopefully two changes that will make a difference. Mr. Marmore, like I said, we really need to get at least a win out of this. Get, I suppose a nil-nil is not the end of the world. It does then mean we have to try and get a result against Flamengo at their place, which is not going to be easy. Um, but I suppose the main thing is just let's not concede an away goal. Bottomore's in here, takes a shot. Oh. Arguably, Bottomore's our best finisher, I think, based on the, st on the, st on the statistics and the attributes and things like that. Ball in from Nora. Not really going anywhere. Goes out for a throw that Ferroni, I would assume, is going to take, but we're not going to see it. So it clearly wasn't that good. A miss, albeit a half decent result, is becoming a little bit more worrying as time goes on. If we don't score, it makes our it makes our lives a little bit more difficult. If they score, it makes our lives very difficult. Arietta on the ball, plays it to Moreno. See, back in red and black, officially, as we, as you saw in the last episode. Starting to play a bit more now. Ball gets swept out to Alanzino, who's going to run down the wing. He's been playing really well recently. Actually, a hat-trick in the uh, Copa Libertadores group stages, which was pretty cool. Gets it again. Oh, just wide. Just wide of the target. Did get tips off the keeper, by the looks of it, so we've got a corner. Ball into Fernandes at near post, doesn't quite manage to get to it. Drops to Achubi, who's now on the right-hand side, tries to get past his man, but doesn't. And it goes all the way back out to Lionel Ferroni, who is getting a bit old now. I think he's 31. He's certainly not young, um, which is a bit of a worry, but Arietta's done beautiful stuff there. Plays it into Achubi, keeps running. Yes, come on! Juan Jose Archibi on his first competitive start for the club squeezes that in at the near post. I don't know how he's managed it. That is lovely balance and skill from Arietta there to get past his man. Ticks a ball in to Archibu. 
powers it in and Clayton in their goal doesn't get enough on it. That's probably the best way to put it. And I think we're going to go through to the second leg with a win under our belts, which is fantastic news. I'm going to tell the boys that they were fantastic in that. Let's get this cup game out of the way. And I'll come back for the second leg down in Brazil. Okay, dokie then. We're at the Maracanã. It's time for the big one. It is time for the second leg of the second round of the Copa Libertadores against Flamengo. We are 1-0 up, of course, from the first leg. We've just come off fresh out of a win in the, in the sixth round of the Argentinian Cup against Mitra. Uh, we won 5-1 with an entirely changed team. The only person who has retained their place from that get from that fixture is Juninho Capixaba from uh, on the left back in the left back position. The team that's going to play against plants. Oh, the team that's going to play a bit. Get, oh my God. The team that is going to play against Flamengo in this one is going to be Vitaler in goal, of course. Juninho, Capixaba, Graça, Gonzalez, and Arieta the back four. Escribano and Nora in the centre of the midfield. Again, need to make sure I remember to change these sorts of things. Aguirre, Bottomore and Debag supporting our Chubby up top. Let's get into the game and let's go through to the next round. It's going to be really disappointing if we don't get through. Oh, I dread, I dread to think. I'm so, so not wanting to go out. Like, ridiculous. I don't want to go out. I don't want the series to end, but it has to. Hopefully we can finish it in a positive way. If not... We still won the league three times in a row, so that's a win in itself, isn't it? We're actually now, I forgot to tell you this, we're now officially associated, or I, it's all me, you've done nothing. I'm officially now considered a Newell's legend. Me, Gerardo Martino, and Marcelo Bielsa, which is awesome. Love that. Nora with the corner early doors then, gets the ball in, doesn't manage to get it. On to the head of anyone just yet. But Escribano picks it up, plays it back to Janino. I'm not saying his last name. Great save by Batala. Juninho's rump has been saved there. Assuming it doesn't now go in anyway. But it doesn't. Esteban Gonzalez gets rid of the ball. Gire placing some pressure on them there. And that is that. Um, in other games that I have seen the results for, I have noticed that Independiente have gone through to the quarterfinals ahead of San Lorenzo, um, which is interesting considering that Independiente were close to being relegated in the in the Super League of Argentina this year. Uh, I think they only were saved by like three points in the end, went down to the final day. So interesting they've managed to get through. And it's another chart. Oh, geez, the Flamengo are really pushing forwards now, aren't they? It's getting very worrying. We've had one shot so far. As, oh, Leah Zhao, I think that was, has just dinked it over the bar. Nora with the ball in. Oh, it's at the post. Oh, I don't know who that came off of. I don't know if it was their bag or... Gratha, but it hit the crossbar post. I don't know what it was either way. Now it's in from them and it's in. Oh, it's got to be. Oh, it's been pulled back. Oh, my word. Scenes. Oh, he's offside. Yeah. He plays it towards. Ah, so Hartman wasn't offside. It was the other guy who was. That's not a very Brazilian name. That's not a Brazilian name. You can't be called Hartman. And be, uh, I'm reading too much into it. Right. Flowing of the free. Oh, my word. They're in again. This could be it this time. It is. It's one all. A goal here from us. And we can really put the pressure on them. And they need to score two. Considering we've offered absolutely nothing in the first half an hour. Leaves me a little bit worried. We've had a lot of the ball. Just not done any of that. None of this. Need some shots on target, please, boys. Nora, the ball in. Oh, nearly gets on Gratha's head, but doesn't manage to do anything with it. Gonzalez back to Janino. Plays it out to Nora again. Plays it to Debag. Oh, tipped it wide. Keeper's having a stormer. Nora with the corner then. Ball into the box. Escribano at the edge. Oh, it's gone over, well, over and wide, it looked like there. Oh, this is worrying. Extra time as it stands. Fortunately, as I mentioned, we managed to play an entirely changed eleven against um, against Mitra in the sixth round. And um, we're actually up against a beer in the seventh round. We're up against San Miguel. I thought it was quite amusing. 
All right, we need to remember we're going left to right now. So this is them attacking on us again. Oh, they're straight through. Oh, Batella. Oh, oh is that double save? No post. I don't know. Gonzalez is injured. Oh, dearie me. That's less than ideal. That's going to be Damien Fernandez coming on then. That is less than ideal. But it's something we have to deal with. Let's ask for some creativity. We've had one shot on target so far. Archer be not quite his amazing best that he was in the last... I'll say he was amazing. He scored one goal. Hardly can class that as amazing. Um, but Gonzalez was our best player up until then, which is a little worrying. Nora with the ball in from the corner then. Chance again, maybe. Tries to get it through Aguirre. Yes! Come on. Get in. Aguirre is delighted. That now puts us on the brink of the quarterfinals. Oh, Gratha nearly knocks it down, but it falls to Aguirre in acres of space, and he tucks it home. Flamengo need to score two. There is no possibility of extra time. This is it. Poo or bust. I'm going to say the naughty word. Escribano on a the ball then. Plays it to Nora. Wonderful ball out to Aguirre. Plays it through to Archubi. Archubi! Oh, Chelsea or Celso tips it wide. He's a good player. We've brought just under 700 people to a 75,000 person attendance. That's a little bit worrying. I bet they, I bet they can't hear us. <laughs> All right, Devo's going to come off. I do that change it did last time. Except I'm going to bring... Oh, the yeah, Alan Zinia, that was the one I wanted. And then let's bring off Nora, who's looking a little bit tired. And we'll bring Annabelle Moreno on instead. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, we're still going through at the moment. I've just got to hold out for the next 15 minutes. I'm going to crank it back to positive. That's something I very rarely do. Oh, this is scary now. Oh, I've actually made all of our changes. I'm going to bring Janino off for uh, for only, but I can't do that because I forgot we changed. We switched out Gonzalez as well. Silly me making two changes then. Next goal wins. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Right. Charles said a ball forwards. Foyth now. One Foyth is that, I'm assuming. Back to the keepers. Good pressure. Keeping them at the right end of the pitch. There's three minutes of normal time plus whatever's added on. And this is worrying. There's a lot of space. They're making it through. Ooh. Luis Enrique hits it wide of the mark. Five minutes added time. No, this isn't fair. Don't do this. Come on, no more highlights. Oh, not another one, no. No, 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 no. Oh, that's a shocking ball. Oh, Alanzino, you absolute legend. Lovely ball from Fernandez out to Arrieta. He's got loads of space. Keep going, my man. Keep going, Aguirre. Oh, saved by the keeper. God, one minute of added time left. It's been knocked forwards. Don't, not like this. Oh, Ronaldo Luis misses the target. Fortunately, still the highlight continues. Just finish the highlight here. I don't mind. I don't want to. I'm not bothered about scoring. It's OK. Ball forward again. This one doesn't go as far, though. But Moreno picks up plays through Alan Zinho is quick and has and can finish. Oh, it's just wide. Oh, yes. Yeah, the final whistle. Come on. We're through on away goals. The journey continues. God, that was nerve wracking. I did not enjoy that at all. It does mean that we continue on to the next round against Santos. Another really, really good side. Great. That'll be Monday's episode then. Where are they? They're actually below Flamengo, so we'll take that. Flamengo, the, the holders of that before. Right, well. We go again on Monday then. Next episode will be against Santos. We'll play at home and then we'll play away. That's as we always do. If you have enjoyed that one, guys, please make sure you hit that like button. That'd be massively appreciated as always. If this is the first time you've seen the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can see all of the new content that comes out over the next coming weeks, months and years. And as always, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Can we go all the way with this bit part team God, I'm hoping we get another chance to change the registration rules before the end of the before the next game. Take it easy, guys. My name's been David, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers. Mm -hmm.